Good morning. I'm honored to introduce administrative organizational and the connectivity issues in Korean port to Sri Lanka Naval Office today. Before I begin, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Hyungsik Nam and I'm a professor in the Department of Logistics at Korea Maritime and Ocean University. I received my undergraduate degree in International Transport, my master's degree in Logistics and the Supply Chain Management, and my PhD in Maritime Logistics. This Korea training session is normally conducted in person by bringing you here to Korea, and it is unfortunate that global COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to conduct it online. However, I hope to have the opportunity to meet you in person in the future and uh, to speak to you in person someday. Today, I will be discussing administrative, organizational, and the connectivity issues to import from the Korean perspective. Since the 1970s, Korea's the maritime industry have been the key economic drivers of all the nation, nation's industry. State-of-the-art technology is uh, Korea's the leading global export, and uh, it is uh, spreading around the world uh, through cooperative relationships between maritime industries such as uh, shipbuilding, port, and uh, marine transport. Currently, Korea is the world's leading shipbuilding nation, and it is fifth globally in terms of nationally flagged fleet. Busan's port is the world's seventh largest container port, and it is served as the hub of domestic and Northeast Asian maritime industry. Let's start the presentation. This presentation consists of seven main parts. The role and the contribution of ports in Korea, the port in Korea, port administrative organizations in Korea, port operation systems in Korea, future trends of ports and the port development in Korea freight transport system, and lastly, case studies of port connectivity in theory and the practice. The first part of the presentation is a brief introduction to the role of ports in the countries, the economy and the society. Before introducing Korea's the port administration organization, I would like to briefly explain the role and the impact of port on the both national and the regional economy. Ports are one of the most important part of a country's the infrastructure. They facilitate trade activities and support economic activities. In particular, Ports serves as a key part of the cargo distribution process, being both the point of origin and the final destination of the cargo. In ports, cargoes are discharged, stored, transported, and processed, and in general, ports play an important role in enhancing the international competitiveness of uh, domestic industries by creating added value to cargo. Four out of the 10 most populous cities in Korea have developed around ports. About 86% of global imports and exports are transported by sea and the Korea that handles 99.7% of that figures. 
Korea also has a high dependence on trade. In fact, international trade makes up 64.5% of the country's GDP. Accordingly, ports are regarded as gateways of international trade that connect the sea and the land. Therefore, ports play an important role in the development of the national economy since they serve as a base for cargo distribution. Additionally, ports make a huge contribution to the development of the national and the regional economy of Korea. Ports in Korea have been founded to generate a national economic ripple effect of 25.4 trillion uh, Korean won. One US dollars is currently about 1,280 Korean won, or 5.4% of the country's GDP. Busan port, the largest container port in Korea, is known to cause a regional economic ripple effect of Korean ones, the equivalent of 6.8 trillion, which is 22.4% of the GRP. In the past, ports played one or only the role of a node connecting the sea and the land. But today, ports are performing high-value logistics and the business, such as the assembly, processing, distribution, and the trade of cargo, as well as the cargo the transportation, collection, unloading, sorting, packaging, storage, customs clearance, and sales information processing. In other words, modern ports go beyond the simple receiving and releasing role of ports of the past. In this slide, I will briefly introduce Korea's port master plan. As you can see, the master plan is the highest uh, statutory plan in the post sector according to Article 5 of the Harbor Act, which itself is the highest level of uh, port related law in Korea. The port master plan is uh, established by the Minister of Ocean and fisheries every 10 years to promote the development and efficient operations of Korea's, port, Korea's ports. This plan has been presented four times since its first presentation in 1992, which followed the 1991 revision of the Harbor Act for the quantitative the growth of uh, Korean ports. I think that the infrastructure construction of uh, Korean ports was most active during this period. The second master plan aimed to foster the national industry to create added value beyond the existing simple cargo distribution. The third master plan, begun in 2011, aims to foster high-value export where logistics, leisure, and the cultural uh, coexist. The fourth master plan began last year for the next 10 years, the Korean post will work toward achieving its goal of building a high-value added digital port system to secure their global competitiveness. 
Major advanced maritime nations frequently have uh, such master plans and uh, developed accordingly. As I said, port construction is a nationalist infrastructure facility that requires a large amount of money and the resources. So it should be implemented according to a mid to long term plan rather than a short one. The second part of the presentation is about port in Korea. Korea is located in Far East Asia. More specifically, it is located between China and Japan. As a peninsula, Korea is surrounded by the sea of three sides of the country. For many years, the Korean people have been living closely with the sea and as a result, they have become an advanced maritime nations. As of May year 2022, there are a total of 60 ports in Korea and according to the size and the role of the ports, they can be divided into 31 trade ports and 29 coastal ports. Trade ports can be categorized as international, national, and the regional trade ports. An international trade port is closely related to the national economy and the public interest and into and from which ocean-going ships mainly enter and depart. International port can be designated as a national or regional trade port, depending on the volume of cargo exported and imported, development plan and balanced regional development that managers, manages and operates them systematically and efficiently. A national trade port is critically related to the national interest in terms of uh, handling cargoes from the hinterlands of a metropolitan area or supporting major key indus industries as a hub for domestic and uh, overseas inland and uh, marine transportation networks. Regional trade port is uh, mainly for handling cargoes necessary for regional industries as a hub for regional inland and marine transportation networks. A coastal port is a port where ships mainly operate between the countries that inner ports. There have been three main goals of Korean port development. The first goal was to enable smooth transportation of export and imports. The biggest goal for Korea after liberalization and 1945 were to secure itself supporting economy and to overcome resource shortages by securing its port. During the industrialized period in the 1970s and 80s, port were able to secure facilities to support the exporting and the importing of cargo for Korea's economic development. The second goal was the expansion of port construction in order to handle transshipment of cargo. With the Gobe port disabled after the Hansin earthquake in 1995, 
transshipment volume to China was uh, transferred to Korea. Between 1991 and uh, 2000, uh, the transshipment traffic of Korea's uh, recorded uh, a surprising increase rate of 37.4% uh, per annum. And uh, in order to handle the freight, uh, the Korean government uh, built a uh, two port system in Busan and uh, Guangyang. Lastly, Korea pursued the construction of ports for transshipment of high-value cargo. After year 2005, with China's construction of their ports, the simple transshipment cargo flown into Korea was reduced, raising the need for high-valued Korean export. The Korean government declared free economic zones centered on ports in Busan, Guangyang, and Incheon, and focused not only on simple transshipment, but also on the construction of ports capable of value-added logistics. Busan port is the nation's largest container port and the sixth largest worldwide in terms of throughput in year 2020. Busan port consists of the old North Port and the New Port, which opened it in year 2006. Currently, the total throughput of Busan port is divided into 20% from the North Port and 80% from the New Port. This slide shows five container terminals at Busan North Port. Wuam, Ganman, New Ganman, Jasongde, and Korea's Express Terminal, which are in clockwise order. Wuam is the smallest container terminal in Busan port and it is not currently in operation. Ganman terminal has four buses. This terminal was the busiest terminal in Busan port, but now the throughput is decreasing due to the main line from different alliances having moved to the Busan to new port. New Gunman Terminal was developed to support insufficient handling capacity of Gunman Terminal and it has three buses. Jasongde Terminal, operated by Hutchison Port Holdings, has six buses, including two small buses. This terminal will be closed down in year 2023 and will be developed as the waterfront in the national port master plan. I will explain the uh, detailed Korean national master plan in the next section. The Korea's express terminal has five buses. This terminal is the biggest container terminal in the Busan Old Port, which has uh, plans to expand its berth length to uh, accommodate ultra-large container carriers. Busan New Port opened in 26 and uh, handled approximately 80% of Busan Port's throughput. The new port is still under construction and is scheduled to be completed by year 2030. Guangyang port has 60 berths and its total handling capacity is around 6 million TEUs per year. For the first time, 
the container throughput of Guangyang port exceeded 2 million TEUs in year 2020. The ratio in the total container traffic of Korea was 10.9% in 2020. The market share of Guangyang has increased stably. There is another main container port in Korea outside of Busan and Guangyang. Incheon port is located near Seoul and is very close to China. As a result, its main activity is trading with China and support Seoul's economy. This is Ulsan port, which is specialized in oil and cars. The total volume of port is very high because of the cargo it handles. While container traffic is very low due to its close proximity to Busan. Ulsan is also related small compared to Seoul or Busan. Among these ports, I will be explaining in detail about the port of Busan and Ulsan with a short video clip. Because Busan is the nation's main container port and Ulsan is known to Northeast hub for oil. Now, I will go over Korea's port administrative organizations. The Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries is the main administrative body in Korea's of ocean-related industries. Sectors such as ports and harbors, shipping and logistics, and fisheries are under this ministry. The ports and the harbor bureau oversees the port sectors in Korea, which carries out functions such as establishing port policies, developing ports and harbors, directing port investments, port area development, technological development and uh, regulations of port operations. In order to monitor all ports and harbors in the country, the Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries established 11 regional offices in Busan, Ulsan, Masan, Incheon, and the other areas. Among with these administrative bodies, main institutions are collaborating in research and development. The development and the monitoring of policies and regulations and providing ocean-relating education. As indicated in the diagram, Busan and Incheon have two high schools providing maritime education and several universities such as Korean Maritime and Ocean University and Bukyong National University provide higher education in the maritime sector. These universities are also involved in research and development and assist in policy development. Institutes such as NIFS, Korea's hydrographic and oceanographic agencies are also involved in research and development, while several organizations such as the National Maritime PNT Office and the Korea's Maritime Safety Tribunal 
are involved in administration, regulation, and monitoring capacities. Let's have a look at different port management styles used worldwide to understand their pros and cons. The majority of the world's ports are owned by the state and are managed by a state-appointed organization. The local or central government or by the ports themselves. State-managed ports are good because they allow for comprehensive port planning with major investments. However, inference the lack of flexibility and inefficient of the government can affect their performance. On the other hand, privately owned and privately operated ports are highly efficient due to their full autonomy. The drawback is they are profit driven and have limited consideration for port authorities are the middle ground. They have autonomy in management and operation which leads to higher performance and they garner the government to support the public interest as a state-owned organization. Understanding the economic purpose of the port and their development is required to be successful in port management. Strategic decisions that need to be taken to decide and manage a port's privatization, centralization, devolution, competition, and cooperation. In the case of Korea, devolution has been very effective with via dispersal of control interest in, instead of centralization. The decision of centralization versus devolution depends on the ability of the dispersed agencies to generate benefits in the face of their cost as well as a national policy with respect to defense, safety, pollution, and so on. There are five main authorities to operation in Korea. Busan, Incheon, Ulsan, Yosuangyang, and Gyeonggi Pyeongtaek. The Ministry of Ocean and Fisheries have direct authorities over the five port authorities. The main scopes of business for port authorities in Korea include development and operation of port facilities, land formation, management and operation of the district park, port redevelopment and the construction of uh, marina port facilities. Business uh, deregulate by the state and uh, the local government. This diagram shows the organizational structure of the Busan Port Authority. The president is the head of the organization, which has uh, five main uh, divisions. The operations, the divisions, the, which oversees the port operation. The management division, which carries out administrative functions. The construction division, which carries out constructional and 
maintenance the activities. The global business division, which oversees marketing and business development, and the port regeneration division, which oversees port development project. There is also the port commission, which is done external auditors to all port authorities and is carried out audits and inspections. Established in 2004, the Busan Port Authority manages the over 30,000 meters of key lengths with a bursting capacity of 146 ships. The cargo handling capacity is about 3 trillion revenue tons per year and about 22 million TUs per year. Let's have a look at a short promotional video for the Busan Port Authority. Like the heart that symbolizes life, Ulsan Port is an economic engine leading Korea's rapid economic growth. Like the heart that supplies blood to the whole body, Ulsan Port serves as Korea's largest liquid logistics port. The power of Korea the heart of Korea's industry. This is the Ulsan Port. With deep water and low tides, Ulsan Port has the ideal natural conditions as a port. It is Korea's representative port that was once used as a gateway for steel exports to Japan during the Saman era and the quintessential port for Korea's exports since industrialization. Ulsan Port is the biggest industrial port in Korea. Since its opening in 1963, Ulsan Port has been developing as the largest industrial port which supports the automobile, shipbuilding, and petrochemistry industries. Nowadays, Ulsan Port handles about half the volume of annual automobile and ship exports in Korea. Ulsan Port, Korea's number one liquid logistics port, is continuously making new changes to become a multifunctional, high efficient port with differentiated competitiveness. At Ulsan Port, there is a power source, an energy that is moving the industry. Ulsan Port, Korea's premier port for liquid logistics, is fully equipped with complete infrastructure, including dolphin piers, which can accommodate 150,000 ton class oil tankers. Crude oil buoys, in which 300,000 ton oil tankers can load and unload crude oil non-stop to run undersea pipe as well as a large-scale storage facility. Ulsan Port is responsible for more than half of the national imported crude oil. Port of Ulsan is the source of power for Korea's industries and will become the liquid logistics port in the world.
Ulsan port is linked seamlessly with industrial complexes. Ulsan port is making its economic efficient and cost reduction due to the Korea's largest industrial complex in hinterland. Ulsan main port is Ulsan port's main import-export gateway. Onsan port supports the Onsan National Industrial Complex. Mipo port serves as the symbol of the world's premier shipbuilding powerhouse Korea. And Ulsan new port will be a cornerstone for oil in the northeast region. Ulsan port, which is made up of four ports, is a highly efficient and multifunctional port organically connected to the surrounding industrial complexes. Ulsan port prides itself on its competitive geographical advantages as it is located in close proximity to nearby industrial complexes as well as excellent transportation connections via road, rail and air. Through state-of-the-art port operation systems, including port mist, vessel traffic control systems, automatic identification systems and sophisticated port equipments, Ulsan port is developing into a world-class port. We will open up the sea routes. Ulsan port, the liquid logistics port of Northeast Asia, will venture into the world. We will become the center of the world. We will cooperate with global corporations and become the center of the maritime industry in the 21st century. Ursan Port, the mecca of liquid logistics, will lead the heart of Korea's industry. Port Authority, established in 2005, manages the over 28,000 meters of key length, with a bursting capacity of 128 ships. The cargo handler's capacity is about 92 million revenue tons per year, and about 3 million TUs per year. Let's have a look at a short promotional video for the Incheon Port Authority. There is a city made of light. There is a future opened with waterways. There is a place where people become one with harmony. Central Bay, the project for harmony between light, water and people. The Fuzan North Port Redevelopment Project. From now on, the of Busan will be changed completely. Being the largest port city in Korea, Busan has had its image as a major industrial city where logistics and shipping are the most important elements in the local economy. Now, Busan will be reborn as a maritime capital of Korea through the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project. Nearly $7,700 million will be invested in the 1.52 million square meters of the project site, covering Junggu and Donggu. The project is to be completed by 2020. The Busan North Port Redevelopment Project will reconstruct the old Busan into a new city of maritime and culture in the basis of functions of its original urban area and to be reborn as an international hub of tourism by building a great water-friendly environment with eco-friendly technologies. Taking advantage of Korea's geographical feature surrounded by the sea on the three sides. The goal of the project is to transform Busan into the number one maritime hub city in the world. 
For Busan citizens, it will boost their confidence and offer spacious places to enjoy maritime culture. For the nation, it will serve as a momentum for upgrading national prestige as a gateway to Eurasia. To make Korea a global hub for maritime culture, the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project set clear goals as follows. Firstly, recreating the function of the existing urban area which once led the development of the entire Busan. Beyond its conventional role as a center of industry and logistics, Busan will be redeveloped to perform higher value-added functions as a hub for maritime tourism and culture. Secondly, constructing an eco-friendly waterfront for citizens. Busan will become an eco-friendly maritime city where spacious green zones, a landmark island, and a scenic waterfront are located in harmony and citizens can enjoy various activities. Thirdly, promoting Busan as an international hub for maritime tourism. Busan will be transformed into an international tourist attraction and a maritime cultural mecca where travelers can enjoy beautiful spectacles and diverse amusements. Busan North Port will be renovated as a landmark of Busan. The island is a trademark of North Port where light, water and people become one in harmony. In the maritime culture zone, surrounded by waterways, a landmark tower and an art center will be placed with all sorts of city functions available. The light of tunnel and the light of waterway will become popular sites of North Port, where high technologies and the beauty of nature are represented together. In addition, newly decorated boulevards in Chungjangro and several theme parks will provide places for rest and relaxation in the city. Busan North Port will be transformed into a multifunctional maritime city where Busan only has in Korea. With the goal of becoming the most competitive place in the 21st century of harbor renaissance, the port is to equip harbor complex zone with an international passenger terminal and a bay cruise terminal connecting land and sea. The zone will show a highly developed form of future port by serving various commercial, lodging and business functions as well as basic port needs. In the meanwhile, the existing facilities will be renovated for maritime culture. For example, the existing coastal ferry terminal is to be maintained to be used as an excursion ship terminal. The international passenger terminal site will be refurbished into the maritime center. There are sensuous themes in Busan North Port. Culture complex is to be constructed to take a lead in operating future business of Busan. IT image exhibition zone will be located in the rear of the project area nearby Chungjongro to continuously promote the cultural heritage of Busan, including Busan International Film Festival. Various cultural centers and leisure complex for exhibition, business and shopping are planned to become a mecca for the future industry of Busan. In addition, commerce and business zone with the financial center and brand shops and city complex zone focusing on city life functions with facilities like hotels, condominiums, dwellings, medical centers and restaurants will be built to provide various contents and additional services. There is pleasant communication in Busan North Port. Busan North Port plans to locate the transit transfer center in the low height area of the city, a fine view of the sea from Busan Station. Such structure allows a clear view for both the new city of North Port and the Sea of Busan. In addition, the Chungangro pathway will be constructed a wide esplanade to link Busan Station to the landmark in Maritime Culture Zone so that it will enhance the visitor's accessibility. Moreover, the Transit Transfer Center directly connected with Busan Station will provide easier access to North Port for citizens using various transportation systems. The city of Busan cannot exist without the sea and harbors. 
This fact is why Busan is eager to develop maritime business and culture. Such important mission can be successfully performed through the Busan North Port Redevelopment Project. Busan North Port will be redeveloped into a distinguished multi-entertainment zone where commercial areas and water-friendly spaces coexist in harmony. Once the project is complete, it is expected to generate a ripple effect of $24 billion, $160 million on the local economy and to create 120,000 jobs, allowing a great opportunity for Busan to become a world-famous waterfront where the cultural industry flourishes. This redevelopment project will not only change the geographic map of Busan, but also transform the entire Busan into a global hub for commerce and trade. Moreover, this project will boost confidence of Busan citizens with a picturesque harbor and attract many tourists from all over the world. It will provide the great opportunity to achieve the status as a maritime country with a high value-added economy. Busan Central Bay, the future of Busan and the pride of the maritime capital of Korea. It will be successfully promoted by the BPA in cooperation with the Korean government and Busan Metropolitan City. Busan Port Authority established in 2005, manages over 20,000 meters of quay length with a berthing capacity of 116 ships. The cargo handler's capacity is about 71 million tons per year. Let's watch a short promotional video of Ulsan Port Authority. Thank <laughs> you.